11 Sports, and for the fans, welcomes you to the following presentation of the Simulation Football League. After 132 games across 12 weeks since season 15 of the Simulation Football League, we finally made it to the playoffs. Tonight, two of the league's longest tenured franchises enter the King's Lair in Jacksonville as they begin their quest for their first ever SFL championship. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to North Florida alongside producer extraordinaire Cameron Irvine, our statisticians Tom Rahman and Rochelle Colston, and my partner Mikey Proda. I'm Tim Hackett. You're watching the SFL Playoffs live on 11 Sports. And for the fans, we're thrilled to be here, and we're happy to have you with us. It's game two of Wild Card Weekend, Mikey. And finally, we're talking playoffs. Yeah, buddy, we're in Duval. And something's a little different in the atmosphere. I can feel the electricity in the air. It's Wild Card Weekend, and the playoffs are finally here. Commissioner Cameron Irvine and the SFL never stops to move us all. And now the biggest prize bears its name. It's a different level of understanding. Who will chase their legacy and leave their mark on season 15? Let's get to it. For the 6-6 six six Houston Hyenas, can the run game remain reliable? And can the defense psychologically succeed? Stopping the deep pass is the key. And on the other side for the 8-4 Jacksonville Kings, can Christian Christensen crush the Kais? And can the sack machine reign supreme? Third down conversions is the key. Are you ready for some wild card football? This is the fight for simulation supremacy. SFL Nation, I'm ready to go. Let the playoff show begin. Number 11, Houston, against number six, Jacksonville. The home team will get the ball first, and we are underway in game two of Wild Card Weekend. Mike St. Grain, the rookie kick returner, set to return on the kick from Nico Cappuccino, and he gets out to the 28-yard line. Mike, this Jacksonville team has been really solid all year. They were the first team out of the bye weeks, the teams that did not have to play this week. That will start next weekend in the second round of the playoffs. The first team out, Houston on the other side, the last team in as the number 11 seed. They made it in as a 6-6 six and six overall squad after they lost last week, had to get a couple of other results to fall their way. But this is still one of the better teams in the league. Their defense, one of the best takeaway units in the SFL. Christian Christensen, the veteran quarterback, over the middle. And his first pass of the day is dropped, knocked away by Brady Clark somehow as he was looking for Trevor Swain. Christian Christensen, he likes to throw it deep. He's trying to take advantage of that early secondary that gave up so many yards through the air last week. 563 to Vancouver. Yeah, just we can't bury the lead any further. It was a really tough day at the office for Houston last week. One of the weakest defensive performances in recent SFL history, but they are still here and they have the opportunity to win their first SFL championship getting started on the right foot here today. Christensen will swing it out to the tailback Jared Willis and the veteran tailback picks up a gain of six through the air on second down. Nice job, Christensen. You can see him step back in the pocket. He's looking to take any deep shot that he can. The secondary was ready. He flipped it out to Willis and he picks up six. Christensen now in his seventh season as the Jacksonville quarterback. Top wide receiver Ken Gossett has been his top target every single year. On third down, Christensen to the left seam. And it's knocked away incomplete. More good defense here from Houston. Grayson Willis, the number two wide receiver, is the target, and it's fourth down. Great job by the Houston Hyenas on defense in this first series. We know DeMond Simeon's going to be pleased with that, and he gives his offense the time to come back on the field. Three and out for Jacksonville. And Houston's defense here forces a three and out, Mike, and obviously only three plays into the game, but two good pieces of defending on pass plays there for the Houston defense after they gave up over 500 yards of offense to Vancouver in that loss last week. Good early start for them defensively here. High cash on the return for Houston, one of the best punt returners in the SFL. And the Hyenas and their strong offense will start off first to 10 
from the 34-yard line. Can Kentez Johnson, the Houston quarterback, you get a look at him here, shake off the rust after last week? That's the question everybody's asking. We know about Warren Murray, their star running back, Mike, but if Kentez has a day anything le- looking like remotely like what he had last week, Houston's going to be in for another long day. The spotlight's on Warren Murray, but that's the big question everybody's asking. Can Kentez Johnson recover? Johnson will throw it here on first down, and the receiver's going the wrong way. It's Warren Murray, the star running back. Does not catch a lot of passes, Mike. He does almost all of his damage on the ground, and maybe you get a look at why. They lose five yards on their first play. Definitely not the start that Kentez and company are looking for. The first play goes for negative five. At Warren Murray, the fewest catches among all regular running backs and also the fewest receiving yards, even though on the ground he was one of the very best in the league. Second down for Kentez Johnson. He's under pressure, throws over the middle. That's caught near the first down and a nice pickup for D.R. Sim, the living legend. Great play by Kentez Johnson. He had the quick drop, the quick release. Now he's got him up to the Houston 44, third in inches. It's not been a very good season for Kentez Johnson, the fifth-year man from Buffalo. He's in the bottom half of the league in almost every statistical category towards the tail end of the league in a lot of those as well. But he looks to the Hall of Famer, D.R. Sim, for a big gain. On third down, they will go back on the ground, and Warren Murray is stopped for a loss of two. This Jacksonville front has been tremendous all year, Mike, and that's Charles Dunbar, their number two defensive tackle that makes the stop and forces a fourth down. Charles Dunbar busts through the offensive line, makes a big play, and he stops Houston from gaining the yardage to gain, and they force the punt. And we talk about the Jacksonville defensive line stars. Charles Dunbar is not one of them, and he makes a big play. Oh, the Kings nearly blocked that punt coming from Brian Adams, and so Mike St. Green will call for and make a fair catch. Dueling punts here to start. No score in Jacksonville. This is the Simulation Football League Wild Card Round on 11 Sports and for the fans. Back inside the Kings Lair in North Florida, a pair of three and outs for each offense to start. Happy to have you with us. Game two of three of this Simulation Football League Wild Card Weekend. Tim Hackett and Mike and Proto here with you live from Jacksonville. We are thrilled to be here and happy to have you alongside us. Jared Willis will get his first carry of the ball game, and he's blown up at the line of scrimmage. This Jacksonville offense, Mike, they're known for their versatility. Three stars on the offensive line, and Anthony Cece, the kicker, has earned the nickname Automatic. Jack Wall, the tight end, is one of the most prolific players at that position, and the skill position players. This is a really, really good unit. Veteran quarterback Christian Christensen, Jared Willis is one of the best in the league, and Ken Gossett leads the wide receiving core. He is one of the most productive wide receivers in SFL history. Second and 10 for Christensen. Risky pass going to the near side for Ken Gossett, and it's knocked away by Jacob Clear, third down. Incredible reaction by Jacob Clear. He read Christensen's eyes the whole way, came up. If that was taken in, he would have put that back into the end zone for six. Numbers on this Houston secondary are good, Mike, but like we said, despite all of the takeaways that they have, second most in the league as a unit, they give up more points and more yards than anybody else in the SFL through 12 regular season games, and last week, of course, did not help. Third and 10 for Christensen, early third down chance, going over the middle for Trevor Swain. It's incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. Mike St. Green is in the area as well. Our first look at R6-2 in tonight's match. Interference against Houston, Mike. They're going to get Alonzo Hamilton, the middle linebacker, the non-roster player for PI on that pass over the middle. 
And that is not what Houston needs. They need to get Jacksonville off the field on third down, something that nobody has been able to do consistently this year. Yeah, Jacksonville is uh, very fortunate there that Alonzo Hamilton came in a little bit too soon. This is a playoff game. These mistakes can't be happening. Alonzo Hamilton Hamilton needs to stay disciplined. That is one of your keys to the game, Mike, right? Third downs for Jacksonville on offense and defense. More than that, more on that as we go along. Houston gives up a free first down conversion. Now Jared Willis on the ground. Room to run for Willis. Lowers the shoulder and picks up the first down by himself. The first first down, not by penalty today, and it's courtesy of an 11-yard run by Jared Willis. Good-looking run by Jared Willis right up the middle. Followed his blocking of Dave Barr, Ricky Thornton, and that big offensive line led by A.G. Pennypacker. They open it up, and he picks up a first down for the Kings. Ethan Kai cannot bring down Jacob Clear, the longest offensive play on the day so far for Jacksonville. Willis top 10 in the SFL this year in carries and yards. Now Christensen over the middle. That pass is caught for a first down by tight end Jack Wall and first downs on three straight plays here for the Kings on offense. Watch out for Jack Wall. It looks like the Jacksonville Kings are trying to exploit the center of the field right down the middle and that's where they got burned last week by Vancouver. All second year tight end, the Long Island native, set career highs this season in catches and receiving yards and touchdowns with a pair. Top 10 in the league in both catches and yards among tight ends. Christensen over the middle, caught again for a first down. Ken Gossett makes his first grab. That's a pickup of 14, and the King offense is cooking. Watch out for Kenny G. He likes to hook up with his buddy Christian Christensen. They're both from Austin, Texas, and Ken Gossett picks up his 93rd reception on the year. After E.T. King, the former King or the former Tallahassee Pride quarterback, I should say, moved over to play quarterback for Chicago. Christian Christensen has been the gunslinger here ever since, and Ken Gossett has been his number one target every single year. They will fling it out to Jared Willis coming out of the backfield, and Alex Perez makes the stop. Let's meet the Houston defense. The secondary is strong, Mike. A couple of veterans led by sixth-year man Brady Clark, who has eight interceptions. That leads the team. And up front, it has been a struggle for this front four. The, sack, the defensive linemen have six sacks combined, but Brody Gulch, the outside linebacker, is one of the best rookies in the SFL, no question about it. Second down and five on the ground, they go to Jacob Clear, and he pulls Alonzo Hamilton forward for a gain of three. Jared Willis, can he will his way today? He's going to be the key man in this Jacksonville-led offense. He touches the ball about 29 times per game. That's second in the league. He tied with D.J. Moses from Arizona. First was Reggie Streeter. He gets the ball about 32 or 33 times, but Willis is the workhorse. Christensen will go right back to Jared Willis out of the backfield, leaves Ethan Kai in his tracks, and picks up another first down. Hamilton wrenches him down after a gain of six out of the backfield. It's been a career year for Jared Willis. Like you said, Mike, second in the league in carries, a career high 284, sixth in the league in rushing yards with 1,372. That is a career high and almost twice what he had last year in his first year as the Jacksonville running back. He has just added another element to this offense. Christian Christensen has had a slightly down year by his standards. Ken Gossett has still been about as good as always. Grayson Willis, Jared's brother, has been solid. But adding in a good Jared Willis to this offense has made Jacksonville as good as they've ever been, you would think. First and 10 now inside the red zone for the first time are the Kings. Christensen on a comeback route caught by Grayson Willis. Grayson Willis accelerates and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. There's a flag on the play. We'll have to check it. But for now, the Kings strike first at home. What a terrific play. And the penalty is going against the Houston defense. Their second of this drive, Ethan Kai has been charged with a late hit, and the score will stand, Mike, the third touchdown catch of the season for Grayson Willis. Grayson Willis runs out, button hooks back, makes the catch, spins around, and takes it to pay dirt. What a tremendous TD! Christensen moved so far out of the pocket, it was all the way up towards the line of scrimmage, and then Grayson Willis looked like he had run an out route or a deep route, rather, and then he had to come all the way back to make the catch. Then he turned around and accelerated into the end zone. We have not seen anything like that all season, Mike. That's where the experience starts to come into play. Christian Christensen in his seventh season, he's got so much poise. He stays calm. He avoided the rush, stepped up in the pocket, hit Willis 
Willis with a dime, and Willis did the work from there to get it to the end zone. PAT from Anthony CC is good. Jacksonville takes the lead here in the playoffs. You're watching the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports and for the fans. Jacksonville goes 76 yards on 10 plays and caps off the first scoring drive of the afternoon with a 16-yard pass link up from Christian Christensen to Grayson Willis, the fifth-year veteran wide receiver, and the Kings strike first at home. Deep kickoff from Anthony Cece and no chance for Kai Cash to return. Mike, this has been our talking point all week. You and I have gotten to see Houston a couple of times this year, and the trend is clear. When Warren Murray is good, Houston wins. When he struggles, they lose. And Cameron Irvine, our producer extraordinaire, put this graphic that you're seeing right now together. In the last two seasons, counting this season, here in the calendar year of 2020, when Warren Murray rushes for fewer than 100 yards in a game, Houston has won once in the last two seasons. Johnson will throw here, has a man down the right seam. That pass is caught first down and a whole lot more. D.R. Sim with a gain of 17. Good looking pass by Kent Tez Johnson. Stepped back in the pocket. You could see how the line protected him. He had all day long. Let Sim run across the middle of the field to the outside, and he puts it right on the money. Great catch by the doctor. Our statisticians tell me gain of 19, but same difference here for Houston. Their biggest play of the game as Kentez finds the man they call the doctor, the Hall of Famer now in his 11th season in the SFL and his 10th with Houston. It has not been a very good season for DR Sim, especially not by his standards. Now on first down, Johnson is under pressure and he goes down. This Jacksonville front, Mike, has been lethal all year, the best in the league, and Hunter Norwood has the first sack of the afternoon. Hunter Norwood, he ranked fourth in the SFL with 16 and a half sacks. And watch out for this front four. I like to call him Saxonville. Yeah. <laughs> that is the nickname that they have developed and earned, no question. Norwood fourth in the league in sacks, the defensive tackle, and on the end, Taekwon Hale is third. Now Johnson will throw over the middle, one-handed attempt for Leroy Brown, but it's just out of his reach. Great on-ball defense by number nine, Alex Bond. So let's meet the role players here for Houston, a pair of stars on the offensive line. Nico Cappuccino, the kicker, has not missed one so far this year, and Stephen McMichaels is usually good for a touch or two per game. Skill players on offense. Leroy Brown is having a fantastic season. DR Sim is the best wide receiver in SFL history. And Warren Murray is one of the best running backs in the league, no question about it. So Johnson goes DR Sims, I'm sorry, Leroy Brown's way for the first time and comes up empty. So now on third down and 16, the hyenas will spread it out. Five wides here for Kentes to throw to. Good protection. Now it breaks down. Johnson to the right sideline, knocked away and complete. In the zone defense, Jacksonville had three defenders there. Alex Bond at the scene of the crime, fourth down. Alex Bond, the strong safety, comes in, knocks that one down. He's out of Texarkana, Texas, and he makes a beautiful play to force the punt. You brought that up, Mike, because Bond is indeed from Texarkana, one of the best city names in the state of Texas, and there are plenty of them, but Jacksonville has a handful of Texas natives against Playing today against this team from Houston. Of course, we mentioned Christensen and Ken Gossett, both from Austin. There are a couple of others across this lineup as well. Mike St. Green calls for and makes the fair catch inside his own 35. And Mike St. Green was third in the SFL this season in punt return average with better than 6.1 over the regular season, but not been able to show things off here so far. And so Jacksonville will take back over with a 7-0 lead. 
Yeah, Mike St. Green, he's done a fine job in his rookie season. He's out of Houston, Texas. His yep. family's watching him today, so he's going to be looking to ball out. And the, and the other member of this Jacksonville team that is from the great state of Texas. On first down, Jared Willis gets the carry, and he runs into Brody Gulch for a gain of just two. Mike, Brody Gulch, the fourth overall pick in the SFL draft this past year. There were some rumors during the draft, and you and I got to be a part of that, that he might go first overall. Our pal David Horrell ends up going first to Fort Worth, a very deserving pick, but Brody Gulch slips, if you will, here to fourth to Houston, and Demon Simeon has found himself a gem, one of the best rookies offensively or defensively this season in the SFL as Christensen links up with Jared Willis, and Brody Gulch is there to escort him out after a gain of three. Brody Gulch, the gooch out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. What an incredible rookie season he had, Tim. 127 tackles. That ranks seventh in the league. Best on the team and also 10 TFLs, also best on the team. It's kind of surprising, Mike. We've said that this Jacksonville front is lethal. Most sacks in the league. Houston's defense, the opposite. Only eight sacks as a team by far the last in the SFL. That might need to change if the Hyenas have a chance. Christensen on third down, pass is caught. First down and more for Ken Gossett out to the 48, a gain of nine, and the Kings move the chains again. What a thing of beauty when you see Christensen drop back and he looks for his favorite target, Ken Gossett. It's timing, it's trust, and he puts it right in the pocket, right there where Gossett needs it, and they pick up another Jacksonville first down. Remember, Jacksonville had to go three and out on its first offensive drive, so obviously that's a failed third down conversion. Since then, the Kings have converted every third down that they have faced. First and ten, Jared Willis runs into Chris Joseph. No gain on the play in this Houston front is ready for it that time. And there is the key stat we think, Mike, third down offense this season. You see it there. Jacksonville converts 60% of their third down opportunities this season, which is insane. Second best in the league. Houston, meanwhile, fourth worst at 45% on offense. Well, if you ask me, third down is the most important down in the game. Third down percentage is highly correlated with the winning. Question and it is correlated into eight wins this season for Jacksonville as Jared Willis goes up the middle and picks up four. On the other side, though, Mike, Jacksonville's third down offense is tremendous, but their third down defense leaves a lot to be desired. They give up 57% third down conversion rate. That is tied for the highest in the league. So if Houston can try to exploit that area of weakness on the Kings defense, that might be a hyena's secret to success. Third down again, and this time the hyena defense is up for the challenge. Alonzo Hamilton was there. Brody Gulch was there. Christensen's passing complete, and it's fourth down. <clears throat> Jacks, excuse me, Tim. Jacksonville's trying to exploit the middle of the field, as we, as we noted on the first three series. That time, Alonzo oh. Hamilton makes up for the penalty. But back to third down. Third downs are so important. They're the most important down for both offensive and defenses because they both have the most to gain and lose. When you fail on third down, you usually force the punt. And then, it get more importantly, it's because it gets the opportunity for, for the opposing offense off the field, and it gets your offense back onto the field. No question about it, and this is great punt coverage by Jacksonville. They slide and stop the Hyenas inside the five. That's backup safety Ira Sharp on the play. He is their top gunner. He's made a number of plays on special teams for Jacksonville this season. Decent punt from Howard McCoy, and Houston is going to be way backed up. Good job by Houston. They start deep in their territory, but anytime you can get Jacksonville off the field and bring your offense onto the field, you'll take the ball anywhere it lands. The two back set, Kentez Johnson to give to Warren Watch Murray. Out. He stood up at the line, and he's, oh man, just barely kept out of the end zone. They'll spot Murray at the one forward progress, keeps him out of the end zone. Dunbar again, Mike, the number two defensive tackle was there on the stop. This front four of the Jacksonville defense is so impressive. How did Warren Murray make it out of the end zone? I have absolutely no idea. He looked dead to rights, no question. So they'll change up the formation, and Kentez Johnson now will change up the signals. Less than a minute to go in the first. They give to Murray. Space for Murray this time. And a nice run for Warren Murray. Up the middle, picks up a couple. Ira Sharp again on the stop. One more game coming your way later on tonight. It's 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. Lone Star at Florida in the 8-9 matchup of this SFL Wild Card Weekend. It is also our crowd play game of the week with Jeff Melanition and Eddie Gage right here on 11 Sports 
and for the fans. So here, as if on cue, Mike, is a third down opportunity for Houston against this Kings defense. They will play it safe, and they somehow pick it up. That play looked doomed from the start, but Brian Horrell shakes forward and picks up 10. Houston moves the sticks. Great effort by Brian Horrell to gain the yardage to pick up a new set of downs. As we mentioned, Houston Hyena is only picking up 45% on third down, which ranks 19th in the league, but somehow Horrell finds the way. Jacksonville gives up 57% on third down, highest in the league. Houston converts, we're done with one from the layer. The home team on top, seven to nothing. This is the Simulation Football League playoffs on 11 sports and for the fans. One quarter in the books here from North Florida. Alongside Mike Proda, I'm Tim Hackett. Rochelle Colston and Tom Rahman are alongside us doing the stats. And Cameron Irvine running the show, like always. Happy to have you with us. First play of the second quarter for Kentez Johnson from under center in the split back set. Johnson, deep ball, right sideline looking for Leroy Brown. And it's knocked away. Good one-on-one -on -one coverage from Bernard Gooden, who missed the play on the last possession. Now this front here for Jacksonville, the best in the league in terms of sacks, Tyquan Hale and Hunter Norwood, both top five in the league in total sacks. Clay Jones also among the league leaders in sacks as a linebacker. This defensive backfield, very experienced. Alex Bond in his seventh season, Bernard Gooden in his fourth, and Michael Sprouse in his sixth, joining the sophomore Succo Lomano and the rookie Rain Aurea. So. A lot of a good experience in this defensive backfield for Jacksonville. Everybody has played their entire careers with the Kings franchise. Second and 10 after the incomplete pass. Quick drop for Johnson. Has time. Throws right side and it's picked off. What a play. Reaching back and making the grab is Michael Sprouse. He had five picks. Or check it. It's Alex Bond. Excuse me. Alex Bond had five interceptions in the regular season. And he's got one here in the playoffs. Alex, U.S. Savings Bond cashes in on Kentes, and he picks it off. Well, Mike, let's drive the point home a little bit further. It was a tough day last week for Houston against Vancouver. A win and you're in type of situation. But Houston, after they led in the first quarter on two occasions, mind you, gave up a huge run to Vancouver, and Kentes Johnson threw eight interceptions in that game last week. He's got one here on the first play of or second play of the second quarter. Christensen now back under center has a pass over the middle and it's hauled in by Jack Wall for another first down. 
Jack Wall right down the middle of the field. Great pass, great catch, and they're on the Houston 16. And to your point, Tim, last week for Kentez Johnson, that without question is unacceptable. It simply cannot happen. Kentez has to stay calm, cool, and collected under pressure. Jacksonville now inside the red zone on one play. Over the middle, oh! pass is caught by Willis, and the ball is on the ground and picked up by Houston. Willis made that catch near the line to gain Mike, and he's hit immediately and dropped. Ethan Kai is in the area, and so is Jacob Clear, and Clear is going to be the one to pick up the loose ball if it stands. What a hit by Ethan Kai to pop the ball loose, and that's what Houston's all about. This defense ranks number two in takeaways, second most in the SFL with 34, and let's see if this play will stand. Takeaways have bailed Houston out time and again this season, no question about it, and a natural challenge here from Frank Good, and we have seen this play a couple of times, Mike, about half the time this stands as a turnover, half the time it's overturned as an incomplete pass. What's your take? This is going to be a big-time call early on in the game. R6-2, what you got? A call on the field is overturned. It was originally called a fumble and a recovery for Houston, and so Jacksonville is going to keep the ball, Mike. We have seen this a couple of times this season, you and me. Jacksonville dodges a bullet. Houston's going to need another stop. Write that down, Mr. Hackett. 10-20 of the second quarter. This could be the X Factor. This could be the play of the game that comes back to haunt both teams. And Houston right now can't be happy. Jacksonville spreads it out. Christensen over the middle. Pass is caught. Mike St. Green is down inside the two-yard line. A pickup of 13. And Jacksonville continues to cook. Watch out for the rookie. He had 30 catches on the year. He averages about 12 yards per catch. And he puts it on the Houston two. They had one catch last week in Jacksonville's win over Charleston, the third time this year that St. Green has only managed one catch in a game, but he has been a big piece of the puzzle offensively this season for Christian Christensen, who now lines up under center. They give to Jared Willis, brings a man forward, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Jared Willis extends the Jacksonville lead in the second quarter. Jack. Jacksonville cashes in. They take advantage of the turnover. And Jared Willis, the E-back, gets into the end zone for six. And I think, Mike, that was Brody Gulch who had the first contact. But as good as Gulch has been this season, he is a rookie against a fifth-year tailback in Jared Willis who has had the best season of his career. And unfortunately, defensively for Houston, that has turned into a mismatch. And Willis, who had 14 touchdowns, in the lead, or this season, I should say, top five in the SFL opens his playoff account with his first of this postseason. Automatic CC is on for the PAT, and you see why he's got his name. He nails another one, and Jacksonville leads 14 to nothing. Keep your eye on the score, Tim Hackett, and all the Houston Hyena fans. If this game is de decided by seven points, could it come down to this questionable call? But it's a 14-0 lead right now for Jacksonville. But as if that first game of today taught us anything, Mike, then no lead is safe. Atlanta, the reigning champs, got out to a 23 to nothing lead against Vancouver, the team that beat Houston last week. And then Vancouver rattled off 34 unanswered points, a sight familiar to Hyena fans, unfortunately. And that helped Vancouver come back and win 41 to 33. So the Legion are the first team to advance. They'll move on to to the knockout, or I'm sorry, to the second round next week. This Jacksonville front four, Mike, we mentioned, the best in the league. Defensive end Tyquan Hale, defensive tackle Hunter Norwood are the best one-two punch in the SFL. Without a doubt. You can call them the sack machine, the QB crushers. I call them the most dominant pass rushing duo in the SFL. Here goes Warren Murray trying to exploit that front. He gets through Tyquan Hale, but he's not able to get through Alex Bond. Gain of one on first down for Warren Murray and Clay Jones, lest we forget about him, Mike. Also in there on the stop, he had four and a half sacks as a middle linebacker. You get a look at him there, 58 in the deep purple. That is the most in the league. Four and a half sacks leads all linebackers. Linebackers in the SFL do not get a lot of sacks. Almost the entirety of their production comes from the defensive line. So Jones best in the league as a rookie, mind you. Johnson on second down, passes caught by DR Sim for a gain of eight. Good-looking pass, good-looking route by D.R. Sammy. Cuts it to the outside, and they pick up eight. It'll bring up third and one from the Houston 29. 
It has been a slow start for Warren Murray. Remember, that is the player we are tracking on offense for Houston, one of the best running backs in the SFL over the balance of the season, no question. But through a quarter and two minutes, four carries, three yards for Murray. Do they go to him on third down? They sure do. Warren Murray with a huge hole out across midfield, still going and taken down inside the 40-yard line by a pair of kings. That is what Warren Murray can do, Mike. Warren Murray just giving the rock something good's about to happen and that's why I like to call him the wizard if he can make the magic happen watch out for the Houston offense if he gets over 100 yards that gives him a great chance to win but as we mentioned earlier in the game when Warren Murray vanishes that's when Houston's offense struggles. To your point, Mamari has scored 13 touchdowns this season. They all came over seven total games. He scored two touchdowns in a game six times. Houston is 5-2 and two in those games in which Warren Murray scores a touchdown. Elsewhere, they are 1-4. and four. Now, Johnson's pass looking for Brian Horrell. That's knocked away. One-on-one -on -one coverage again, and Alex Bond makes another play. Yeah, they got to keep feeding the rock to Warren Murray. Prior to that, carry had four carries for three yards. But on that last big gain, he ripped off 36. And that's what they need to see happen to gain yardage and find success against this Jacksonville D. And Warren Murray is good. He is very good. And when he is very good, Houston wins. There is absolutely... No doubt about that, their key to success. Second and 10, Johnson will throw it again. Has a man wide open. Leroy Brown makes his first catch, and he's down at the 21. Bad, bad, Louis Roy Brown. He checks in in today's game, and he could be the X factor for the Hyenas this afternoon. He has been a massive piece of this offensive puzzle for Houston this year, Mike. We mentioned D.R. Sim is having a down year by his Hall of Fame standards. So enter Leroy Brown, who's just outside of the top 25 in the league in catches, eighth most receiving yards through the regular season, 11th best yards per reception among, every, among players who played in all 12 games at just under 15 yards per catch, one of the best seasons of Leroy Brown's career, helping get the Hyenas into the playoffs here in season 15. First and 10 from just outside the red zone. Risky pass from Johnson looking for D.R. Sim and Michael Sprouse. One-on-one -on -one coverage knocks it away. They call him the lockdown corner, and he came up real fast to knock that one away. Kentez wasn't lucky. That was gone for interception number two. Next to your corner from Scenic Joplin, Missouri. On the stop against DR Sim, you get a look at him there, the 11th year wide receiver, the Houston native now in charge of the team playing for his hometown. Second and 10 from the 21. Quick drop back for Kentez Johnson. Bullets it over the middle into one on one coverage, and it's knocked away incomplete, going for Dax Lewis, the tight end, and J.R. Lawless with another pass breakup, Mike. He had 15 in the regular Lawless season. From Tucson, Arizona. Kentez has had a lot of time in the pocket to pick out his wide receivers, but give credit to this Jacksonville defense. They've been up to the challenge, they've knocked down just about every pass. 15 pass deflections in the regular season for Lawless, tied for second in the league. Only Jay Ringgold of Sioux Falls had more. Third and ten. We mentioned third downs critical in this game, you would think. Johnson is under pressure, and there he goes. Another sack from Saxonville. Hunter Norwood has his second, and it's fourth down. Hunter Norwood, the QB hunter, I like to call him. That's his fifth sack in the last six games. He started off the season really hot, kind of slowed down over the middle portion of the season. Tyquan Hale, his counterpart on the defensive end, really picked up the slack. They're both in the top five in sacks, both okay, in the top ten to in tackles for goal. loss, like we said. And Norwood, with his second of the day, forces this field goal attempt from Nico Cappuccino. The rookie kicker is still perfect on the season. He's 17 of 17 and Houston is on the board. Less than seven minutes to go in the second. The uh, Hyenas crack the scoreboard. It's now 14-3 with Jacksonville on top. This is the SFL on 11 Sports and for the fans.
Nico Cappuccino hits a 42-yard field goal. The rookie has made every kick that he has attempted this season, despite being third and two, last in the league in kick attempts in his rookie season. The former Birmingham fuel kicker has been a big piece of the puzzle offensively here for Houston. And now Mike St. Green, who has not had a whole lot of success returning kicks, contrary to his success returning punts, gets out to the 26-yard line. Last week, Mike, this Houston defense, they really struggled. They gave up 76 points including 40-plus unanswered against Vancouver, the most in modern SFL history, including 701 total yards of offense to the Legion, Brett Killian, Tom Pepper, and company. And Kentez Johnson did not do himself any favors. He threw eight interceptions, including a pick six in the fourth quarter to kind of doom any chances that Houston had to come back. Jared Willis with a nice about face, and he moves up and picks up a gain of about six. Wolf Justice was there to try to bring him down from behind, as well as Curtis White's. Impressive run by Jared Willis. He tried to go to the left, didn't find anything there, cut it back to the right, ran behind his big offensive line to guard and tackle Dave Barr and Ricky Thornton and found a nice way to pick up five. As we said last week, Mike, and you and I were there in person to see that game for Houston against Vancouver, we figured that the Hyenas would still have a good shot to make it in the playoffs as Brody Gulch blows up Jared Willis at the line, give him a loss of one on second down, and that brings up another third down here for the Kings. But you and I said last week we figured the Hyenas would still be able to make it into the playoffs because of the balance of their season. That did indeed happen. They got a couple of results to fall their way, and now they're here against Jacksonville, the top, the highest-ranked team in this wild card mat, in this wild card round the sixth seed and that has allowed Houston another chance to prolong their season even further fourth th third down sorry and St. Green's pass St. Green makes the catch on the pass from Christensen but he's blown up a yard short of the sticks by Everett Garrison the cornerback from Virginia Beach Everett Garrison has played nicely over the last two weeks makes a big play and nails St. Green a yard short of the first down but he did come back and finish the game. And it's good to see him out there leading the pack as usual for the Hyenas. Here comes a punt from Howard McCoy. Kai Cash, one of the best punt returners in the league, wrenches up forward and picks up about four on the return. Mike, these two punt returners, they don't talk about the return game all that much in the SFL necessarily, but get this. I mean, Kai Cash was second in the SFL this regular season in punt return average at 8.2 yards per return. And Mike St. Green on the other side, third in the SFL in punt return average, just better than six. They're two of only three players in the SFL with a punt return for a touchdown this season. Gabriel Manning is the other. Kentez Johnson now with the ball again. He'll check it down to Stephen McMichaels, and McMichaels is blown up for a one-yard loss. Good job to throw it out to Stephen McMichaels. Thought he might have some room to run, but that defense reacted so quickly. McMichaels is taken down for negative yards. Rookie fullback from Dayton, Tennessee, spent last season as one of the, the starting running backs with the Ottawa Cavalry that made it all the way to the minor league championship game that you and I got to see, Mike, and McMichael scored a pair of touchdowns in that game in a losing effort. Second and 11, Johnson evades pressure, floats it, tipped, and picked off Bond, Alex Bond, with another interception, his second of the game, Warren Murray on the tackle, and the Kings pick off Kentez again. This Jacksonville defense has come to play, but give credit to number 25, Michael Lockdown Sprouse, who read Kentes the whole way. He went up, tip drill, and Bond was there to pick off pass number two for interception. Jacksonville is on the Houston 37, looking to extend this lead. Watch out, Hyenas. Christensen will go back under center. Three wide receivers bunched down to the left and one to the top. Willis is the tailback. First to 10 inside the 40-yard line. Christensen floats it for Grayson Willis. He dives to try to make the catch, but it's just out of his reach. Second down. We mentioned those eight interceptions last week from Kentez Johnson. Like He was really middle of the pack in turnovers. Houston was really kind of nondescript in terms of offensive giveaways, but after last week, Johnson was up to 31 interceptions thrown in the regular season. That was tied for most among league quarterbacks, so it's just kind of crazy how much one poor game, one bad game in that case, can really kind of torpedo how your season numbers look if you're Kentez Johnson, and he's thrown two here in the first half here. Jared Willis with a stutter step. He's only able to pick up two. Alonzo Hamilton on the stop. 
Big hole for Jared Wellis, but that closed quickly. Alonzo Hamilton in his middle line back in position come up and made a nice hit. So that way he couldn't pick up any more. But, yeah, Kentez really needs to quiet down. He needs to take care of the ball. I know that uh, the performance last Sunday is not what they expected. So Kentez Johnson really needs to take it easy, and they're going to start to have to run the ball with Murray if they want to not uh, have so many turnovers like the way things looked last week. The Houston defense stands firm here. Mike Christensen links up with Kenny G, Ken Gossett. That is a gain of about six, but he's four yards short of the sticks, and the Hyenas make the stand. Good job by the Hyenas after that turnover. That could have spelled disaster, but they're going to bring out Anthony Cece for about a 48-yard field goal attempt. So Cece will indeed come out for a 48-yarder, like you said. And it, the man they call Automatic has not missed a field goal in his first two seasons in the SFL. And the kick from Anthony Cece is up, and it is good again from 48. Mike, he was 29 of 29 in the regular season, a man that you know very well. And he's got his first field goal of these postseason, of these playoffs. Yeah, the automatic man, Anthony Cece, in his second season out of Andover, New Jersey. Last year, he was 29 for 29 in season 14, and this year again in season 15, 29 for 29. He's kicked 59 field goals in a row. Is some impressive synchronicity, huh? 29 of 29 last year, 29 of 29 this year. Amazing how that works. Kai Cash on this return for Houston. He did not start the season returning kicks. Brian Horrell was given that honor for the first three weeks, did a decent job, but then Kai Cash has come in, and like we said, he's been one of the best punt returners in the SFL, even though his kick return average is not really that good. So now Houston down by 14 for the second time in this game. Mike, what is the prescription for success? 333 left until halftime. Do you still go to Warren Murray? Absolutely. you got to stay away from the turnovers. You can't have Kentes throw any more INTs. Warren Murray needs to start working, but that's not going to get it done. Yeah, that won't get it done. Murray runs right into Taekwon Hale, who had 19 tackles for loss in the regular season, top 10 in the SFL. Give him one there. Warren Murray ran right into a bear hug. Yeah, we talk about this front four with so many sacks. But don't forget about the TFLs. Norwood had 21, Hale with 19. Those are also both top 10 in the league. Mike Gall on the other side, the other defensive end, also had a decent year, but he's really the number three man as Murray goes up, tripped up from behind by Clay Jones. That could have turned into a bigger gain. Sprouse was there as well, and a nice pickup for Murray. After he was blown up for a loss of four, he picks up eight. Yeah, great job by Murray. Houston's got to keep it on the ground. That's where they're most successful. Let Warren Murray do the work. Statisticians saying that Houston is two of its first five on third downs. Can they pick that up and exploit this King's main defensive weakness? Third and six, Johnson floats. It's caught. First down. There is a critical conversion on a third down situation as Houston links up with Don Mathis, the number four wide receiver on this team. Nice find from Kentez. Great job by Kentez Johnson. The blitz was coming in right at his legs, and just as he was hit, he let it go, and he found Mathis to pick up that critical first down. One note to that whole sack storyline for Jacksonville. We'll get to it here as Johnson's sidearm pass out of the hands of Dax Lewis. He tried to reach up and haul it in with one elbow, and Mathis was also in the area as well. That aforementioned number four wideout who just made the last catch. So Jacksonville, 42 and a half sacks as a team, best in the league. But Houston gave up only 16 sacks all season. Just 16, the second fewest in the SFL, this coming after a season in which Houston allowed 38 sacks of Kentez Johnson a season ago. Second and 10, Johnson over the middle, caught for a gate of nine. It's a two-minute warning here in the first half. The Houston offense moving the ball here down by 14. This is the wild card round of the SFL playoffs on 11 Sports and for the fans.
Let's go, Ramen. Leroy Brown makes that catch. It'll bring up a third down and one here for Houston around midfield. And all season, Mike and Proto, Houston has been a team that is happy to flip the script. Pass on first down, run on third down. They trust Warren Murray. We've seen them run it to him on third down before. Maybe they do so here. They sure do. Warren Murray tries to crack outside. One cut back, and Murray picks up the first and a whole lot more. He only needs one, Mike. That time he picks up eight. They go to him on third down, and he delivers. I love when Warren Murray gets the ball. Look at his vision. Look at the way he works. He knows the yardage the game was third and one, and he picks up another Houston first down. Great job, Hyenas. Halfway to that 100-yard plateau, which has become that magic mark for him. They'll go to him again. Murray with another nice run. He picks up six, wrenched down from behind by Mike All. Watch out if this guy gets the motors running. Warren Murray, two consecutive uh, carries. He picks up nice yard, and he gets a gain of six. We were tracking this when we saw Houston in person a couple of weeks ago, Mike. I said that Warren Murray, over his last two regular season games, needed about 250 yards to break his own record, set a new career high for rush yards in a season. He broke it that game with 280 rushing yards. Johnson's pass, risky, dropped by Jones, and it's caught somehow by Leroy Brown. That should have been a pick for Clay Jones. Instead, Leroy Brown is inside the red zone. What a play. Unbelievable play. I need to take a look at this replay. It went off the defender's hands and back into Leroy Brown. How did he come up with that? I have absolutely no idea. How did he come up with that? That should have been a pick for the sure-handed Clay Jones, who has stuffed the stat sheet like his name is Mark Lopez this season. Those four and a half sacks, eight tackles for loss, as well as three picks <laughs> as, his, as a rookie. That time he couldn't haul it in. And Leroy Brown with a big catch. Houston inside the red zone. First and 10, Johnson drops back, finds Brown again this time. He's blown up after a gain of about six by Rie. Leroy Brown, he's the main man in the passing offense. He caught 70 balls in the regular season. They go back to him. He's looking that way. Brown is open in the back of the end zone, and he holds it in. Touchdown. Houston is into the end zone for the first time. Brown had 10 scores in the regular season. Kentez writes the ship, and Houston could get back within seven. Sometimes it's great just to have a little luck on your side. And the man that they call bad, bad Leroy Brown checks in with a touchdown. Three straight catches on that drive for Leroy Brown, who had that big 50-yard touchdown catch to open the scoring last week for Houston before everything went awry. He has been their go-to guy through the air all season. When Houston needs a score, they run it on third down to Warren Murray. He delivers, and then on the next three plays, Leroy Brown gets him into the end zone on that one fluky play admittedly but that last play he was just wide open in the back of the end zone nice find from Kentez Johnson Cappuccino hits the PAT we've talked about the two running backs this season Mike Murray and Willis but both of these teams have legitimate number one wideouts Leroy Brown and Ken Gossett Oh, for sure. When th these two teams need to find a playmaker, who do you look to? Brown and Gossett, 100%. Look at Leroy Brown. He was tied for third in the SFL with 10 TDs. Kent Gossett, we mentioned 92 receptions. That's good for second best in the league. When these teams need to find someone to step up and make a play, it's usually Brown and Gossett who tend to catch the spotlight in those situations. Two big-time playmakers, Mr. Hackett. Anybody's standards, 92 catches for 962 yards and eight touchdowns like you saw. All three of those numbers were good for top 15 in the SFL. But actually, by his standards, it was a down season. 965 receiving yards, second fewest in a season in Ken Gossett's career. He's been over 2,000 one time as well. Christensen will throw. Hit as he throws. Bombs it over the middle. And it's picked off right into the hands of Ethan Kai. This game is swinging the other way. Jack Wall with the stop. Christensen is been known to throw timely interceptions, Mike, and this time Ethan Kai is ready for it. Did you see the pressure come through the middle of the line? Force Christensen to throw it a little bit further than he wanted to. Ethan Kai comes up with a big INT. And right now for the Houston Hyenas, Uncle Mo has swung to their side. 
What have we said the last three weeks, Mike, when we've seen Houston in person? This defensive front has been anemic. They have eight total sacks. They got two last week in that losing effort. That time, that pressure from the front four, led by Tina Begin and Mike Baker, was the reason that Christensen had to throw it earlier than he wanted to. Ethan Kai gets the takeaway. He had seven in the regular season. Johnson now to throw. Pass is caught over the middle. First down and a gain of 10 for Dax Lewis. Remember, we're inside the two-minute warning here, Mike. Houston's going to get another opportunity to add points on the board with 25 Five seconds left. What a turn of events when you thought that the Jacksonville Kings were controlling this first half. Within the last minute and a half, the Houston Hyenas have finally woken up. Leroy Brown finds the back of the end zone for six. Ethan Kai makes a big play, and right here before the half, if the Houston Hyenas can score some points, this will certainly turn the tide for this game for the third and fourth quarter. They get Taekwon Hill to jump on that play. It sure looked like him on the outside. Johnson's pass is caught by Brian Horrell. It'll be a gain of about eight. So decision time here, Mike. If you're the head coach, do you take the penalty or do you take the play? Well, let's see. You mentioned on that play, did they gain more than five yards? If sure they did. did, they'll take the play. But if not, then they'll certainly take the penalty. Either way, they keep possession. They move the ball up and they're moving closer to field goal range right before the half ends really I mean about equidistant here late in this late in the period with only 21 seconds left and they actually elected to accept the penalty so it should have been second and about three instead they'll make it first and five and they get Hale to jump again Johnson's pass is caught first down and a whole lot more for number 82 Corey Barkley they're blocking tight end that moves the sticks we saw him make a couple of catches over the last couple of weeks Mike Johnson to Barkley another neutral zone infraction against Jacksonville Back-to-back -back plays, and Hale jumps off both times. Jacksonville starting to come unraveled here at the half, but the biggest thing here for the Houston Hyenas is that when these penalties are accepted, the clock stops and they save their timeout. It's a great point. Absolutely. They get to save their last time out that they had to use a cup. They had to use their second a couple of minutes ago, but they have one now still to use. 17 seconds to go. They'll take the penalty again. First and 10 and a fresh set for the hyenas from the 13 yard line. Johnson to throw to the back of the end zone again into double coverage. It's caught for a touchdown by DR Sim, and Houston could tie it with a PAT. Oh, my goodness, D.R. Sim checks in, and he makes an unbelievable catch to tie this game. This is unbelievable. Well, it's not quite tied yet, right? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We know what happens in this league. PATs are almost automatic in the SFL, but not a sure thing. And again, Nico Cappuccino has yet to miss a kick of any kind this season, but it is not a guarantee. Barry Bergens will hold. Nate McGregor will snap. And the rookie kicker from Tulsa, Oklahoma, is on for the PAT. Houston has scored 13 straight points. They'll take their time and the kick from Cappuccino, make it 14 straight points. Hope you didn't give up on the game. If you're watching, Houston has come all the way back to tie it up. Thank goodness Cappuccino didn't make me look bad on that extra point. <laughs> I've learned my lesson here in the SFL and otherwise, Mike, trust me. Here's something else that we've learned, Mike. 13 seconds left in the half. I'll ask you this. I ask you this every time. Jacksonville, in theory, barring something crazy, is going to get the ball back at about the 30-yard line. How aggressive do you be? We'll wait to see on the return because Mike St. Green has been very good at returning kicks this season. He has an opportunity to field, breaks through the first wave, and he's going to get hit at the 27. So nine seconds left, all three timeouts left for Jacksonville. Christian Christensen is one of the better quarterbacks in league history. You've got Ken Gossett, one of the best wideouts in league history at your disposal. How aggressive are you if you're Frank Good? That's a question that I never usually get right when you ask me, Mr. Hackett. <laughs> but if I'm the Jacksonville Kings with the last uh, two minutes, with the way things have happened and Houston has scored 13 unanswered points, I kneel down, I try to take it into the locker room, tie it up, but it looks like the Kings are going to come out passing again. Here we go for it. Christensen, risky pass. It's picked off right over the middle with five wides. A risky decision from Christensen, and it's taken away by backup corner Curtis White. We'll have to check the marker. A face mask against Houston? Yes, incidental face mask against Brody Gulch. I have never seen that called in the SFL, Mike. This is our 13th game together here in the major leagues, but I have never seen a face mask called. They're going to get the rookie Brody Gulch, who might be the rookie of the year on defense for Houston. That's going to give Jacksonville a free 15 yards. 
Unbelievable, the things we've seen here in the last two minutes of this first half. How can Jacksonville be so fortunate? They could have turned over the ball there. Maybe they would have brought out Cappuccino for a long 55-yarder, but they regained possession. Wow, is good and happy to see that. Four wide receivers now for Christensen. Hail, Fair, Hail Mary formation. Christensen deep bomb, and it's intercepted this time. That takeaway is going to stand for this Houston defense, which was as good at taking the ball away as anybody else in the league. Kai Cash, Mike, did not have an interception in this regular season. He gets one here. They foil the Hail Mary attempt, and we're going to go to the locker room tied at 17 apiece. We've got a ball game on our hands, and the playoff intensity is electric. Wow, back and forth we go. The first quarter was controlled by the Jacksonville Kings. You thought they might even run away with it, and Houston might have just get, had the uh, the hangover effect from last week's blowout in Vancouver. But in the second half, DeMond Simeon's crew has really come alive. Right now, it's points over off the turnovers that have been key. We know in this league, Mike, you can never give up on a game. We saw that. We mentioned it already. If you were with us for the first game of our Sunday triple header earlier, Atlanta led 23 to nothing. The reigning champs against one of the hottest teams in the league, Vancouver, the aforementioned Legion, which put up 76 points, a modern record last week. But then the Legion got cooking. They scored 34 unanswered to ultimately take the take the lead and then ultimately win the game 41 to 33. Jacksonville at home up considerably here in the second quarter, but then Houston turns it on late. They've scored 14 straight to tie the game. In this league, it is almost never over until it's over. Yeah, without question, you gotta play ball until the final whistle blows. These teams know losing go home, survive in advance, and look at the way the road team, the Houston Hyenas, have battled back to tie this game up. This is impressive. I can't wait for the second half. Obviously, we're in the playoffs now, Mike, so it's win or go home. But So if you lose, your season is over. But what's also interesting is that since this is the 6 versus 11 matchup, we know what the matchups next week would be. Vancouver has won the 7, I'm sorry, yes, the 7 seed defeating the 10 seed Atlanta Swarm. So the highest seeded team, meaning the team with the lowest number, we know where they would go. They're going to play Sioux Falls in the next round of the quarterfinals. The team with the lowest number seed, meaning the highest number, the lowest wild card seed will play number one seeded Denver in the next round. So since this is the six versus 11 matchup, we know who the winner will play. We just have no idea who the winner is. So if Houston pulls off the upset and it would indeed be an upset against Jacksonville, they would play Denver on the road next week. And if Jacksonville wins here at home, they would play Sioux Falls next week in the three versus six matchup. Those would both be very interesting games, but for your key to success, Mike, in this game has been Warren Murray. And let's check in on him after the first half, after a very slow start, one run of 30 plus yards. You see one of those takeaways by Ethan Kai. He's halfway to that hundred yard plateau after one half of play. Warren Murray hasn't looked bad when he's touched the ball. He was slow to get it going in the first quarter, but he ripped off that long run that led to the touchdown. He's got nine carries in 55 yards, so he's right on pace to crack that century mark. But on the other side of the ball, Jared Willis hasn't been able to get it going. Only nine carries in 27 yards. He does have that crucial touchdown that gave Jacksonville the lead. But both teams need to protect the ball. Whoever wins the turnover battle in the second half, that's the team, in my opinion, that moves on to the second round. By the way, that touchdown for Gerald Willis was the first in his postseason career. We're about ready to start the second half. The Hyenas will get the ball with a 17-all tie. Happy to have you with us. Tim Hackett and Mike Caprota here with you in the booth. Tom Rahman and Rochelle Colston doing the stats. Our friends joining us here on the show today. And Cameron Irvine, as always, running the show behind the scenes. One more game for you coming up later on tonight. Lone Star at Florida. Great kickoff here from Anthony Cece and no chance on the return for Kai Cash. So Houston will start from its own 20. They've scored 14 unanswered points to come back and tie this game. Mike, what do you expect them to do here to start? Do you have to go back on the ground and try to control things? I think so. I mean, especially when we started the game, we asked the question, can the run game remain reliable? Can the defense psychologically succeed? Right now, both boxes are checked. Yes, get the ball to Warren Murray. First down, will Kentez Johnson do that? He will. 
Prayers answered here, Mike, and Moran Murray has a lot of running room down the left sideline. One spin move and a big gain of 27 yards for Murray. Stopped at the end of it Look by Clay blocking. Jones. Look that is a way to start Murray's the half. speed takes him all the way around the outside for another big gain. Watch out for the Wizard working his magic. And he is good. Houston is good. Like we said so far, Mike, in the seven games in which Warren Murray has scored a touchdown, he has gone over 100 yards and scored a touchdown in all seven games. In those other five games, he was under 100 yards and did not score. Ken says Johnson, great block against Hale. He'll check it down to Stephen McMichaels and a nice pickup for McMichaels. Give him eight through the air, knocked out by Succo Lomano. Great job by the fullback. He knew he was going to get the ball, and he trucks over the, the quarterback for a nice eight-yard gain. Stephen McMichaels out of Dayton, Tennessee. Averages about one and a half touches per game over the course of the regular season, which is about middle of the pack for SFL fullbacks. Jacksonville, of course, does not employ one. Kentez Johnson has a man over the right seam, but it's knocked away incomplete. I think he was looking for Leroy Brown, but Alex Bond, Mike, gets his hands on another pass. Bond has been absolutely fantastic in the defensive secondary oh. today. Looked like he actually slipped. Was that Clay Jones? I think sure that was. might have been Clay Jones. I thought he might have been slipped on the turf, but he recovered, got his fingers up, and was able to deflect that pass incomplete. A good call by you. It was Bond on the body and Clay Jones on the ball. Don Mathis, the number four wide receiver, was on the target. So give Clay Jones another pass deflection. He had nine in the regular season. I mentioned he was a real stat sheet stuffer, one of my favorite middle linebackers to watch in the minor leagues. He's turned that into an amazing rookie season as the Jacksonville middle linebacker. Here goes Corey Barkley again, Mike. Needed two to move the chains. He picks up three. Houston will take that. Corey Barkley doesn't get targeted a lot, but when he does, he makes the play look very, very easy. He picks up the first down, and the Houston Hyenas look like they've been energized out of this second half. And wow, the Houston Hyenas, watch out. Kentes is starting to get comfortable. He has really started to right the ship after a really rocky first quarter and a half or so. Here goes Warren Murray, who is also starting to pick up steam, but not that time. That's a way to let the air out of the tires. Clay Jones with the hit for a loss of one. He has been big today. This is the 10th all-time meeting between these two franchises. Mike, of course, Jacksonville used to be called the Tallahassee Pride. This is their second season now here at the north part of the state of Florida, and this is now the sixth season in a row that these two teams have met in either the regular season or the playoffs. They did not meet in the regular season here in season 15. Kentez Johnson throws to the near side. It's caught by D.R. Sim. And a pickup of four, and they've met a couple of times in the playoffs as well when Jacksonville was known as the Tallahassee Pride, and they split those first two meetings. So the winner today will take the all-time franchise lead in playoff matchups, and of course, more importantly, will move on to round two of the quarterfinals of the season 15 playoffs and stay in contention for their first ever SFL championship. These two franchises have been around a long time, but they have never won at all. Johnson's pass over the middle, bobbled, bobbled again, and caught, it looks like, by Brian Horrell. That hit a couple of bodies, and the second-year man somehow holds that one in. Big-time play from the number 88 out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Trips were at the top of the screen. They came into the middle of the field. Kent has threw it in traffic. Somehow, Horrell's hands hang on. I have no idea how Brian Horrell made that catch. A career year for him. For the sophomore from Winston-Salem, Murray again and to the right side, and Clay Jones is there on the stop. Bernard Gooden is there to help. Clay Jones has been massive in this game, Mike. Well, he had a great year. He had eight TFLs. He had four and a half sacks, 91 tackles on the season. Even last week, he played very, very well. 14 tackles in week number 12. Jack Wall points out in the chat, we've now seen a couple of deflected catches. Both teams have had some fluky plays go their way. Nothing fluky about that one. Brian Horrell, spin move, he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Houston takes the lead. Brian Horrell scored four touchdowns in the regular season, and now he's into the end zone. His first career postseason score. Brian Horrell, what a catch, what a move, and what a play.
playoff TD as he fakes the DB out of his shoes and cashes it to pay dirt. Oh, he left somebody completely on the floor. I didn't see who it was. It might have been Alex Bond, who's been a tremendous player this season and has had a massive game so far. Brian Horrible, just a simple cross. It looked like he almost jumped a little bit too early on that replay, but they say it's a fair play, and Brian Horrell takes it to the house. What a play. This man from Winston-Salem has really come alive. In week 10, he only had three catches for 51 yards. Then in week 11 against St. Louis, only three catches for 36 yards. But today, every time he's been targeted, he's been tremendous. You mentioned the Horrell family on this broadcast before, and Simulation Football League fans will have gotten to know the name by now. David Horrell, we mentioned the number one overall pick in the most recent SFL draft going into this season. I call him the Patriarch. His wife, KT Horrell, the Matriarch, also a linebacker here in the SFL. Two friends of the programs, but Brian Horrell really is the founding father, if you will. He was the first member of the Horrell family in the SFL. It is his second season here in the major leagues. Everybody else spent last season in the minors. Now almost everybody is in the major leagues at some point or another. The key to success this season, Mike, has been the balance on offense. Jared Willis has had a career season as the running back. Ken Gossett has had a down year by his standards, but a great year by anybody else's standards. Christian Christensen, the gunslinger, leads the pack. They're top 12, as you see, in just about every important offensive category. And as we said earlier, they're lethal on third downs. This is just a really, really good offense. Well, yeah, I talked to Frank Gooden this week, and that's his M.O. coming into today's game. He loves the chess match that these games present, but their main focus in the playoffs is balance, balance, balance. When they have a balance on both sides of the ball, it's not going to really uh, uh, amount to uh, big-time statistics or an exciting brand of, uh, of football, but he certainly likes the results. And most times when they have balance, the result is a W. I like how this team is constructed, Mike, and you and I have talked about this all season. I don't think Jacksonville can be considered an under-the-radar team by any stretch. They've been good all year, but I think they're equipped to succeed in this league as Christensen's pass for Jack Wall is knocked away. That'll bring up third down. Alonzo Hamilton is played well here after a poor first quarter, but you just add in all of those pieces that you just mentioned that Frank Gooden talked about a true number one wide receiver in Ken Gossett, a really, really good number two wide receiver in Grayson Willis, a legitimate feature back in Jared Willis, a good tight end in Jack wall and a quarterback that has seen the, uh, been there, done that in Christian Christensen. There aren't too many other teams that are well-equipped on all phases of the offense like Jacksonville is, but that has been a re issue for them all season. Christensen with another risk, he pass and it's right into the hands of Jacob Clear. He should have had a takeaway earlier that was negated. This time he's got a pick and Jacksonville falls even further behind. Well, it's been quite clear to me that Christian Christensen has lost his composure and what a big time INT by Jacob Clear. At four takeaways in the regular season, last year's first-round pick from Demond Simeon in this Houston defense, the second-year man from Canberra, Australia, with a massive play. Houston has scored 21 straight points, and they will start with the ball right on the midfield stripe. Kentez Johnson has all day. Bullets it over the middle, looking for Dr. Sim, and it's caught by Dr. Sim through three defenders. Dr. Sim with a gain of 16. DR Sim, he's got the reliable hands, but let's talk about the way Kentez Johnson has come alive here in the second half. He's looked cool, he's looked comfortable, he's got to be able to loosen up and let his instincts take over. And right now, he's the hottest man on the field. Full calm collected, Kentez Johnson, a gain of 16 through the air for the Hall of Famer DR Sim. Houston is on an absolute roll, no laughing matter for the Hyenas. Warren Murray trying to break out of a tackle, and he does so somehow, drags Michael Sprouse. They're going to say somehow that his forward progress was stopped for a loss of one. It looked like he got to the line, but either way, that should have been a loss of five, and Murray turns it into a loss of just one. Yeah, loss of five. I could not agree more. How did Warren Murray get out of the backfield and only lose one yard? That's the power and the strength of this workhorse running back. He's been great all season, like we said, and a slow start for him. He has really started to shake that off. He's over 80 yards rushing. We'll go back to him again. Spins out of the first hit. Now he's going the wrong way. This Jacksonville front was ready for that one. Sprouse had an early hit, and J.R. Lawless cleans him up. It'll be a loss of about two. 
J.R. Lawless, he had eight tackles for loss on the season, but you could see the Jacksonville Kings defense sell out on the run. They called the run blitz, and it was the perfect play call. Third down and 12 on the fringes of field goal range. Too far right now for Nico Cappuccino, you would think. Johnson to the top of the screen. Pass is caught by Leroy Brown, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds, short of the sticks by Rain Rie. That makes it a little bit easier, Mike. You're inside the 30. You kick it here now, right? Oh, absolutely. I like the play by the Houston Hyenas. Kentez, he was under control. He didn't want to throw uh, an interception deep or take any chances. He's playing with a seven-point lead right now here on the road. He gets the ball out to his receiver and makes it a little bit easier for his field goal kicker. He's coming up with a 46-yard field goal attempt. I like what the Hyenas did. Johnson finds Leroy Brown, their number one wide out this season to get them close. Nico Cappuccino is on for the field goal, and he knocks it through. He made every kick in the regular season, and the rookie delivers again 24 straight points for the Hyenas, and they now lead by 10. Six minutes left in the third. Houston on top on the road. You're watching the wild card round of the Simulation Football League playoffs on 11 Sports and for the fans. Don't go anywhere. Hyenas have rattled off 24 straight points to take a 10-point lead on the road. And this is not a situation that is unfamiliar to DeMond Simeon and the Houston franchise. They have won three road games in the playoffs in the history of their franchise. Not a lot of other teams can say that. Decent return here for Mike St. Green. Last time came in season 13 on a late pick six from Everett Garrison against the Chicago Wildcats. Houston also has road playoff wins in season six and in season 10. They were trying to, they are now trying to make it four road playoff wins lifetime against the Jacksonville team that they've beaten once in the playoffs before. And they have a long and storied history with this is the 10th all-time meeting between these two franchises. Here goes Jared Willis as the Kings try to right the ship. He goes hard up the middle and picks up nine. Ethan Kai on the stop. Yeah, great job by uh, the Jacksonville Kings uh, offensive line to allow Willis to pick up the nine. That's only his 10th carry. Uh, for, and he's up to 36 yards. This Jacksonville offense needs to get it going. And it's going to be about Christian Christensen being able to throw deep. He's got to get this team back in the game. Ninth in the league in yards per carry this season at 4.8. Jared Willis, they will go to him again on second and short. Lowers the shoulder and blows through Everett Garrison. Jared Willis is still going. Tackled inside the 40 by Kai Cash. That might have saved a touchdown. Jared Willis showing off some of his bruiser ability and a big gain for a first down. Jared Willis says, forget about the pass. Watch me get the ball. And watch me run and watch me pick up big yards. I thought he was going to take that for six, but it looked like number 27, Kai Cash, made that touchdown saving tackle what a play on both sides of the ball really do think that would have saved a touchdown for Jared Willis who isn't necessarily the big yard runner that Warren Murray is first in the league in yards per carry this season but he's so effective in that mid-range game and he's got a big gain there Christensen's pass is knocked away incomplete going over the middle for Trevor Swain who has been in the action a couple of times seventh year quarterback Christian Christensen Mike he is a very well-known figure in the SFL and you got a chance to chat with him this week 
Yeah, what an interesting person. You can ask him anything SFL related. He's truly a league historian, has incredible knowledge, helped me prepare for the season 14 All-Star game. And the funny thing about him in the Discord, he goes by the name The Ontologically Impaired. But Chris and Christensen, in my book, he's the real deal. He's incredibly intelligent. He's an extraordinary person. Another one of my SFL buddies, world class from Texas A&M, dig him. That was not a word that I have ever heard before. An SAT word there from Christian Christensen. And there's a look at that uh, intelligence that you were just speaking to, Mike. A nice pass somehow feathers it into Ken Gossett. He stopped half a yard short of the sticks. Well, he better not be ontologically impaired if yeah, he no wants kidding. to bring this Jacksonville King back in this game. He's got to pick it up with the pass and avoid the INTs. Those two have been doing it together for a long time. It will go to Jared Willis, a fairly new member of this offense. He breaks through the first rain, the first line, and Jared Willis to the races, and he's stopped at the five for the second time in this possession. Kai Cash saves a touchdown, but another pickup on the ground for Jared Willis, and Jacksonville is down inside the five. Watch Jared Willis. Wow, he comes in. He just bowls over Brady Clark with that powerful strength. Wow, what a great powerful run by Willis to get it down to the Houston Five. Jacksonville has to get into the end zone to keep this game close. That play was Clark on the deck. Two plays ago, it was Garrison on the deck. Do they go back to Jared Willis here? 3.33 left in the third. Christensen will throw. Has a man wide open over the middle. Ken Gossett is into the end zone. The Kings stop the bleeding. These longtime teammates link up again, and this could be a three-point game again. Christian Christensen and Jared Willis get all the credit on that drive. Look at the way they move the Kings down the field, and Christian F Christensen finds Gusson in the back of the end zone. That's exactly what the Kings needed. Or two back judges there, Mike. They were the closest defenders to Ken Gossett on that play. That was crazy. Nobody else was anywhere near Ken Gossett. They looked like they were playing in Tallahassee. I think Houston might have stalled out on the run. They saw Willis in the backfield and thought he might get the carry. But Christensen audibled perfectly and found Gossett for six. Anthony CC on for the PAT, and he knocks it through. That stops, stops a run of 24 straight points scored by the Hyenas. You said Jacksonville needed those points there. Ken Gossett delivers. He scored eight touchdowns in the regular season. He's now got 12 career postseason touchdowns in this his seventh season he's good for about a hundred yards uh in a, in a game in the playoffs or thereabouts and he has just been such a lethal part of this jacksonville offense his whole career one of the best in league history and he's nowhere close to done kai cash tries to get outside on the return and what a stop houston's gonna start inside their own 10 nice tackle made by danny atkins the reserve outside linebacker Let's see how the Houston Hyenas react. What a ball game we have here late in the third. This is just what we expected, Mike. Jacksonville, the favored team, no question about it. You see the line at the bottom of the screen favored by the folks at Jack's data. By about seven and a half, but favored by our community as well. But they're trailing now here for the first time. They pull within three. Johnson's pass is caught by Warren Murray, and he picks up three right on cue. There is the community poll, Mike. This is the most lopsided in terms of fan consensus of the three matchups on this wild card weekend, perhaps to be expected because of how things went last week for Houston. And since this is the six versus 11 matchup in comparison to the eight versus nine matchup that's coming up later on tonight. So our fan community heavily favored Jacksonville. The line significantly favors Jacksonville, but the score right now favors Houston. Warren Murray shuffles forward and picks up six. Warren Murray, this guy is just willing it to happen. Should have been stopped for maybe a gain of uh, one or two, but he keeps the legs turning, refuses to go down, and it brings up a third and one. Murray was over 200 yards in a game four times this season, including three times in a row en route to a new career high in total rushing yards. Here he goes again. They go to him on three straight plays, and he picks up the first down, Alex Bond, on the stop. What a great block to open up that hole by Stephen McMichaels. Watch as he lines up. 
He hits the linebacker to create the hole, and Warren Murray allows himself to follow behind and pick up five for the first down. Good call by you, Mike. We should know that you should all, you're always looking out for the fullback. He stands up, Clay Jones, one-on-one, -on -one, rookie on rookie, paving the way for a six-yard gain and a first down for Warren Murray. Houston has been decent so far on third downs. We mentioned that might be the key to success. Warren Murray is finally starting to get going, though he has not found the end zone yet. They will go back to him again. He picks up two, and then he's ridden down. Big hit at the end of the play by Taekwon Hale. Well, right now the Houston Hyenas are winning the turnover battle and they're winning that critical third down battle. They picked up seven third down conversions on 11 attempts. That's a little over 63%. While the Jacksonville Kings, who really excel in that statistic, have only been three for eight at a dismal 37%. Big storyline in this game, no question. Johnson's pass looking for Leroy Brown. That's out of his reach. It'll be third down. If you're wondering what you're watching, we're happy to have you with us. This is the Simulation Football League. It's the first controllerless eSport where strategy and AI instead of thumbs determines outcome. Teams submit game plans prior to the simulation, and the results then play out live in real time with hundreds of viewers turned players, scouts, coaches, and team owners on the field. That creates an all-new kind of virtual reality. Visit www.simulationfl.net for more information. Kentez Johnson in his fifth season as the Houston Hyenas starting quarterback with a third and eight to the right sideline. Has a man wide open. Brian Horrell makes another big catch. Kai Cash jumping for joy on the sidelines and another big catch for the sophomore from Winston-Salem. Houston out across midfield. Everybody focuses on Warren Murray. Everybody clamps down on Lee Broy Brown and DR Sim. But don't forget about the man in his second season who scored a big time touchdown. Brian Horrell, he's come up with big play after big play here in the second half. To your point, Mike, Leroy Brown is the number two wide receiver at the top of the screen. Bernard Gooden was shadowing him, and that left Alex Bond as the only man on Horrell. They exploited it. Now Johnson's looking for Leroy Brown, and it's picked off. J.R. Lawless was shadowing Leroy Brown that time, and the linebacker, who had only two picks in the regular season, stops Kentez Johnson on that one, and a huge takeaway for this King defense. J.R. Lawless comes up timely. He's from Tucson, Arizona, and he picks up the takeaway. Third interception today thrown by Kentez Johnson. Christian Christensen has also thrown three interceptions. We mentioned this hyena defense, one of the best in the league at takeaways. That's not really been Jacksonville's strength, despite the experience here in this secondary, this five-man unit that we highlighted earlier. But J.R. Lawless for two interceptions in the regular season might help Jacksonville turn the tide. Christensen's pass is caught by Grayson Willis, his fourth catch of the ball game. That's a gain of seven. We came out of the half. You asked me what the difference might be here in quarter number three and number four. And whoever wins the turnover battle should probably come out with the W. Right now, both QBs are at three, three interceptions apiece. But that lawless INT couldn't have come at any better time. That has certainly given the ball back to Jacksonville to take the momentum away from Houston. Kings trying to continue to capitalize on that momentum. Christensen's pass is caught by Mike St. Green, and they move the chains once again. Grayson Willis, Mike, I mean, to me, he's a legitimate number two wide receiver behind, of course, Ken Gossett, who is one of the best in league history. But honestly, it's been kind of a down year for Grayson Willis, which is a surprise because he was top 25 in the SFL in both catches and receiving yards. He did only score two touchdowns, which is kind of a surprise. But those two figures, his catch totals and his receiving yards totals, are way down from what he's done over the last couple of years. Christensen will go back to him. Willis makes the catch for a pickup of four. Kai Cash on the stop. And more on that as we go along here. We're done with three. Here from the Kings Lair. The Kings trying to get back on top of the throne. They've been usurped after a big run by Houston. One more quarter to go. This is the Simulation Football League Wild Card Round on 11 Sports and for the fans.
back and happy to have you with us. Game two of three of this Sunday SFL triple header wild card round action. Second and six, Jared Willis on the carry, lowers the shoulder and moves the sticks. Bulls through Everett Garrison and Jared Willis is off to the races. Down the sideline, Gulch is the only man that can stop him and Brody Gulch will stop him at the seven yard line. Another bruising run for the fifth year man from Buffalo and Willis gets Jacksonville inside the 10. Big time players come up in big time situations and look at Willis plow over the linebacker to take it inside the Houston five and a great play by Brody the Gooch Gulch to save that from going the distance. Probably should have been a touchdown for Jared Willis like we said earlier but Brody Gulch with an incredible play coming out of nowhere to make the stop. There were two other hyenas that were rallying to the charge but now Jared Willis over 135 rushing yards here today. Did not have a single playoff touchdown coming into action today. He's got one and he's got the Kings on the doorstep. Down by three, just underway in the fourth quarter. Two tight ends. The give to Willis breaks through the first wave again, and Willis picks up three. Gets through the tackle of Tina Begin, but Kai Cash is there to bring him down at the four. Houston, Mike, we mentioned it has been a Jekyll and Hyde season, as Cameron Irvine called it, for the Hyenas on offense. You see it here. When they score, they win. They go... They live and die by their offense. Put it another way, when they score 40 points in a game, they are 5-0. and When they score fewer than 30 points in a game, they are 0-5. Here goes Jared Willis trying to get the Kings back on top, and he stopped two yards short of pay dirt by Alonzo Hamilton. Well, this right here is going to be the eye-opener if Jacksonville could get into the end zone and take the lead. Can Houston come up big on this third down play right now? This is the biggest moment in the game. Now, obviously, Houston sitting at under 30 points. They did not win a game this season when they failed to score 30. Third and goal from the two. They'll go back to Jared Willis, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown. The fifth-year man did not have a playoff touchdown prior to today. Now he's got two, and the Kings take the lead again. Unbelievable running by Jared Willis. He took the ball every single play and on the last one he gets it in the paint dirt Jacksonville is somehow taking back the lead that 49 yard run breaking through two different Houston defenders set them up and then three plays later Willis punctuates his own scoring drive with his second touchdown of the day Jacksonville back on top by three this has been an incredible game here comes the PAT from CC, and he knocks it through again. It is now a four-point Jacksonville lead. They've scored 14 straight points after Houston scored 24 straight points to take the lead. And what did we say, Mike? If Jacksonville fans, if you're watching, you were starting to despair after all the momentum. If you believe in that, it swung into Houston's favor. Jacksonville gets a takeaway. Jacksonville drives down the field twice. Jacksonville now has the lead. What can Houston do about it? What they, I don't know what they could do about it, but what they need to do about it is if they want to win this ball game, they got to come down and answer the call and put six on the board. That extra point by Anthony CC could prove to be critical. Kai Cash will get out to the 25-yard line. If Jacksonville wins, they will face Sioux Falls in the next round of the playoffs coming up next weekend. Decent times all yet to be announced. If Houston wins, they will play the number one seed, Denver on the road in the playoffs next weekend. Vancouver already won earlier today. The number seven seeded Legion are moving on. The eight nine matchup, Lone Star at Florida is on tap next, starting off at the bottom of the hour, 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. Warren Murray tries to crack outside and Tyquan Hale blows him up. It's a loss of three. Tyquan Hale, he knows that this game's coming down the stretch. He gets it to the backfield and he buries Murray. You mentioned these two stud defensive linemen, the best one-two punch in the SFL. Hale on the outside, Norwood on the inside, both top 10 in sacks and tackles for loss. They've both been good today. Murray again on the give, tackled by Michael Sprouse, but there is a flag on the play. This is about as many penalties as we've seen all season, Mike. Sprouse, as we said, on the stop, and now let's check in with R6-2. You never know, this could be critical. It's going to be a hold against Houston. Oh, my goodness. One against number 77, that's right tackle Terrence Smith. Big time mistake by Terrence Smith. Pushes back to Hyena, is causing a second and 23. 
Well, I don't know if Houston has a play that can overcome this type of yardage, but little chunks may allow them to make it more manageable, but they can't find themselves moving backwards at this point of the ball game. Mentioned all the weapons that Jacksonville has. Houston has plenty at its disposal as well. And Johnson will check it down to Murray. Two spin moves and a third spin move for Murray. And that's going to make this third down a whole lot more manageable, Mike. How'd he do that? Alex Bond on the second effort makes the stop. Bernard Gooden was there. It's a pickup of 12 on second and 23. Just when you think something is impossible, Warren Murray works his magic and picks up 12. I have no idea how he did it. Bond was 20th in the league with just under nine tackles per game. One of the best marks for a defensive back. The seventh-year man from Texas playing against the team from Houston here this afternoon. Third and 11. Still a long third down attempt here for Houston, but more manageable after that gain of 12. Johnson's pass is caught short of the sticks, though, by Brian Horrell. They needed 11, and Horrell only gives them nine. Bond again on the stop, and that brings up fourth down. Yeah, just not enough by Brian Hurl. He's been big time every time he's received a pass. Just fell short two yards. And great job by the Jacksonville Kings to force the punt. A great year it's been for Horrell. 35 catches for 481 yards and four touchdowns coming into today. Obviously through the regular season, that is loads better than the numbers he put up in his rookie season. A St. Green slips one tackle, and then he's blown up. Horrell had only 16 catches last season. So Houston back on defense, Mike, and that gives us a chance to talk about your pal Tina Begin. Yeah, where do I begin with Tina? The, <laughs> the first female in the SFL from the great state of Rhode Island. And coincidentally, that happens to be my home state. She's married to uh, Queen City safety Albert Begin. And you know what she loves about her player? Her player is huge. Six foot three, 312 pounds. But in real life, she's only five foot one. Biggest, littlest defensive lineman in the SFL, no question, as Jared Willis goes up the middle and picks up a couple. Brody Goltz was there in the stop, as well as Ethan Kai. If you're new to the SFL, Mike Proda is our senior SFL insider. He does an amazing job week in and week out, I like to say it, learning about the people behind the players here in the SFL, trying to figure out who these folks actually are this week, learning about Tina Begin from the great state of Rhode Island as Christensen's pass is caught short of the first down line, I believe, by Jack Wall, pickup of about six. And this is what makes Mike Proda as good as anybody else in the league. It's actually going to be number 84, Ken Goss. My apologies, not 81, Jack Wall. Either way, gain of six. But Mike Proda doing what he does best and learning about the people behind the face masks, inside the jerseys, and telling us the stories about the people off the field. And Tina Begin, and I'll begin, friend of the program, the Queen City safety, two big pieces of the Sibel communities. Jared Willis has been a big part of the community for five seasons now, and he moves the sticks again for the Kings. Yeah, Jared Willis has really come alive. He started to pick it up. He picks up another first down. And Tim, did you know they say Rhode Island is so small you could fit 221 states of Rhode Island inside the state of, of, of Texas? <laughs> don't mess with Texas and don't mess with Rhode Island either. Did not don't know that. Either. Here goes Jared Willis. Don't want to mess with him either. Another first down for Willis. He picks up 12 on the ground. Stopped there by Brody Gulch. The SFL playoffs have begun, and they continue today and into next week, where quarterfinal action will be aired live right here on 11 Sports and for the fans. How can you watch the games live? Visit www.simulationfl.net and read the Where to Watch news post to see if you have the channel on your smart TV with your cable or satellite provider, or you can download the For the Fans app on your Android or iPhone today. If you're watching, we are happy to have you with us. Tim Hackett and Mike and Proto, five and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Jacksonville by four with the ball. Christensen's pass is caught over the middle by Mike St. Green. The rookie makes another great catch. Jacksonville continues to cook. Mike St. Green's been targeted four times, and he's holding in four times, and that play couldn't have come at a better time. What a play by Green down the center of the field. What did we say earlier that the key to this Jacksonville offense is the balance? Christensen is having a slow game by his standards, less than 70% completion and three picks, but he's completed three balls to Grayson Willis, four to Mike St. Green, five to Ken Gossett, and two to Jack Wallace. He's blown up this time. Great pressure by this Houston front. Chris Joseph, who has been the best defensive lineman here for DeMond Simeon's squad, the second-year man and the Houston native, blows up Christensen. He throws it away second down. 
great strength, great pressure by Chris Joseph, the untamed bear. We haven't called his uh, name much today, but that was a great play to knock that pass down. Three sacks and seven tackles for loss for Chris Joseph, the second-year man, both best on the team. All three other members of this Houston defensive line are all rookies, including Tina Began, a rookie from Rhode Island. There goes Willis, stopped by Brody Gulch for a gain of two. One more game still to come later on today. And if you want to play with us, you can download Crowdplay. It's our new partner for 2020. That way you can play the game about the game. Follow the action and answer the questions for a chance to win a share of the $1,000 prize pool. Your next chance to win is today at 6.30 p.m. Eastern when the Lone Star Glory visit the Florida Storm in the wild card round. Visit Crowdplay.com for more information. Another chance for you to win some free money. What's better than that? Jared Willis has been easy money today, but not this time. Alex Perez makes his first big play of the afternoon. He blows up Willis for a loss of one. That stops the drive in its tracks. The big linebacker from Laredo comes up big time on third down, and that couldn't have come at a better time. This will be an attempt by Anthony Cece, but to stop him here, Houston gets the ball back and they're still within a one-score game. Right you are, Mike. If Cece makes this, it will still only be a seven-point game with less than four to go. The man that they call automatic is on for his second field goal attempt of the ball game. The hold from the backup quarterback and the snap from Gus Lucas and the kick from CeCe is up and good from 41. He is still perfect in his first two SFL seasons. Jacksonville on top by seven. Four minutes left in the fourth. Don't go anywhere. We've got a ball game on our hands. This is the SFL on 11 Sports and for the fans. The second season of the SFL Minor League is underway, but it's not too late to build a player, get on a team, and start progressing in preparation for the next SFL rookie draft coming up this December. Mike and Proto and I are big fans of the minor leagues, and we would not want you to miss out on an opportunity for you to make an impact. Kai Cash with one stutter step on the return. He'll start to the 22. Visit www.simulationfl.net. That way you can join our Discord server and get on the field in a matter of weeks, contact Deputy Commissioner Andrew Rustelli on Discord after visiting the hashtag Get Started channel if you have further questions. We'll see you on the field soon. And next season, season 16 of the SFL, you can make an impact in the major leagues. There are so many rookies on display here. We mentioned the three on the Houston defensive line, Mike St. Green on the offense for Jacksonville, plenty of other folks across the board. Warren Murray makes the catch for a pickup of about three through the air. We mentioned he does not catch a lot of passes. Houston will break out the hurry up here. Three and a half to go left in regulation. Johnson's pass again. They'll check it down to Murray, but he's going the wrong way. He stopped for a loss of three by Bernard Gooden. Murray just couldn't turn his shoulders around, and he gets knocked back to the line of scrimmage. Unbelievable. A loss of three. Johnson on third down over the middle looking for Dax Lewis, and it's batted away by Clay Jones. Excellent coverage by the rookie middle linebacker. Johnson actually had a wide receiver over the middle, but Jones makes the play, and Houston is going to punt. Questionable series of events for the Houston Hyenas. So much time left on the clock. Not sure why they went to the hurry-up offense. There's plenty of time. Houston somehow found their way back to the line of scrimmage on that Warren Murray pass. Gained negative yards. And right there, the defense from Clay Jones knocks that pass away. Gets his defense off the field quickly and gives Christian Christensen some nice field position to get the ball back. 
right here at midfield. Brian Adams will punt it away, and indeed, Jacksonville will have great field position after that three and out from Houston, the first one of those that we've seen in a while. These two offenses have been clicking. Jacksonville, Mike, has scored on its last three possessions, five-yard pass TD from Christian Christensen to Ken Gossett, and then the two-yard rush TD from Jared Willis, his second of the game, and on their last drive, nine plays, 43 yards, capped off by the 41-yard field goal from Anthony Cece. They're on a roll, 17 nothing run to take the lead by seven Jared Willis is stopped in the backfield hey look who it is Mike Tina begin on the stop great job by Tina begin she only had four TFLs on the season but that's a big time play in a big time situation Chris Joseph the sophomore defensive end wears number 74 in the Houston white and black he's the most experienced of the foursome second year man from Houston and he's joined on the line Demond Simeon had to rework his entire defensive line all three rookies all from the Northeast Tina Begin from Rhode Island Mike Baker from Carlisle Pennsylvania and Wolf Justice from Nogatuck Connecticut who has had a slow season despite being their first round pick this year 214 to go Jacksonville taking its time Willis on the carry and he stopped after a gain of two. Ethan Kai was in the area as, as usual. Well, J Jacksonville's got the seven-point lead. They're going to give it to Willis to try and run this down, and that'll bring us to the two-minute warning. Houston has all three timeouts left, but they also have a seven-point deficit. Don't go anywhere. This is the Simulation Football League, the wild card round. The winner moves on. The conclusion is next on 11 Sports and for the fans. Jared Willis is leading the charge here for Jacksonville. They've scored 17 unanswered points to take the lead. Two minutes left, third down and seven. They'll go back to Jared Willis. Powers forward, and he stopped a, a yard short of the line again. Brody Gulch, one of the best defensive rookies in the league, makes the stand. Willis is a yard short of the sticks, Mike. Decision time now here for Frank Gooden and company. Wow, what a decision here. Do you roll the dice and try and pick up the first down that would probably seal the deal Just i think you punt and uh and pin them back with the seven point lead Let's see what they do christensen is back under center 12 seconds on the play clock willis is alone in the backfield two wide outs to the left only three people on the defensive line here for houston they will stack the box with a couple of extra linebackers and christensen will call a timeout it's fitting mike our last game together this year we've seen this just about every week the sfl bait and switch play houston does not bite and the hyenas are going to get the ball back one more time 
This time, I actually like the move by Frank Gooden to see if he can pick up the first down, but the Hyenas know what's at stake. They want the ball back. Nobody's moving an inch right now. And so Jacksonville has to burn a timeout, waste a timeout, you could say, but if the Kings do their job here on defense, they don't have any need for those three timeouts. So they try to use it strategically, right? Try to get Houston to jump. Houston does not bite well-disciplined despite being young up front. A couple of sophomores and a handful of rookies, they do not fall for the wily veteran Christian Christensen's tactics. And so Howard McCoy will come on to punt. Fair catch signaled for and made by Kai Cash, who made who had a punt return touchdown earlier this season. We'll take another break. 151 to go in the game and maybe in Houston season. They're down by seven. This is the Simulation Football League. One fifty-one left to play in this win-or-go-home wildcard playoff game. Tim Hackett and Mike Caprota here with you live. Tom Rahman and Rochelle Colston doing the stats. Cameron Irvine running the show. Maybe last chance corral here for the Hyenas. Over the middle, Kentez Johnson's pass is caught. DR Simmer, check it, it's Brian Horrell. He shakes through a tackle and gets all the way out to midfield, out across midfield, and a huge gain for the second-year wideout. Wow, what a play by Brian Horrell coming across the middle of the field. And if somehow the Houston Hyenas can come away with this victory, you got to look at Brian Horrell as the star of the game. A career day for the second-year wide receiver from Winston-Salem. Unofficially now, Mike, five catches for 89 yards and a touchdown. His career high previously was four catches for 67 yards and a touchdown that he set, or two touchdowns actually, that he set back in week seven against London. He actually had 68 yards in a game earlier this season. That was his best game of the season and a new career day for Brian Horrell to try to keep Houston in this game. He scored a touchdown earlier to help them extend the lead. Can he help them move down the field and try to tie or maybe take the lead? Houston uses a timeout, 142 to go. Ken says Johnson floats it down the left seam, and Leroy Brown makes the catch. 90 seconds left in regulation, and the Hyenas are inside the Jacksonville 30. Can Ken Tez Johnson lead the comeback? Two great passes, two big-time plays. 23-yard gain for Leroy Brown, who has been somewhat quiet in this game. Now he's got over 90 receiving yards. First to 10, Johnson's pass over the middle, caught. First down again for Brian Horrell. He picks up 11. Could this be the coming out party of Brian Horrell? Easily the best game of his young career. Remember, he had only six catches. I'm sorry, 16 catches all season last year as a rookie. He's got six here tonight, and he's over 100 yards unofficially for the first time in his SFL career. Under a minute to go. Kentez Johnson off the worst game of his career, trying to lead a spirited comeback and keep the hyenas in the playoffs. Johnson, top of the screen, caught for a gain of seven. DR Sim hauls it in that time. Michael Sprouse on the coverage. Houston will go right back to the line. They have one timeout left with which to work. 36 seconds left. Johnson to the near side this time. It's caught. Brian Horrell is into the end zone for a touchdown. And the Hyenas are a PAT away from tying the game with 33 seconds left. Are you serious, Brian Horrell? What a drive by Kentez and company. And the man from Winston-Salem does it again. There were two defenders over there. He Jab steps around Rain Rie, the slot corner, and then Bernard Gooden was left in the dust as well. And Brian Horrell just high points it, comes up, 
and pulls it in. That's a joke for the North Carolinians on the broadcast. The Winston-Salem native, not the High Point native, but close enough. Nico Cappuccino on for the PAT. 33 seconds left, and the rookie kicker from Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the biggest spot of his life. He nails it again. He is still perfect on his kicks in his rookie season. We're tied at 34 with 33 seconds left. Unreal. Two killer games here already in the SFL playoffs. The 15th inaugural season of the Simulation Football League. League. One more game still coming your way later on. It'll start as soon as we are done. Lone Star at Florida right here on 11 Sports. And for the fans, Jeff Melanition and Eddie Gage are standing by. The crowd play game of the week. Your chance to win some money as well as watch, hopefully, another good playoff game. We're two for two so far today. Mike St. Green on the return ahead of steam. And he gets out to the 27. Time left, you would think, for Jacksonville, though, Mike. 28 seconds left. This great offense that we've talked about, two timeouts. Anthony Cece is your kicker. There is plenty of time for the Kings. Absolutely. There's plenty of time. This game right now is probably going to rely on the arm of Christian Christensen getting his big-time receivers, getting out of bounds, using those two timeouts, and allowing Anthony Automatic to come away with a big-time field goal winning kick. What is Christensen going to do here? He will fire it over the middle, and it's caught for a big gain for Ken Gossett. These two have played together their whole careers, Mike. Now their seventh season as the quarterback and top wideout combo for the Kings franchise. They link up in a big moment. Big gain for Kenny G. Great camera angle down the center of the field. You saw Gossett come from the left side, and Christian Christensen threads the needle. They pick up the first down. They move the ball up to the Jacksonville 44. There's one timeout with 23 seconds left to go. Last drive, five plays to go 88 yards, capped off by the eight-yard touchdown link up. From Kentez Johnson to Brian Horrell to tie the score. The Kings use their second timeout. 23 seconds left. Christensen's pass. It's knocked away. Incomplete. Grayson Willis was on the target, and Alex Perez lowered the boom. Boy, did he lower the boom. He lowered the lumber, and he knocked the wide receiver to the ground. What a hit. What a hit is right. And Alex Perez has had a really solid fourth quarter after he was beaten a couple of times earlier in this game. Grayson Willis had a touchdown earlier to get the scoring started in the game. Has been fairly quiet since. 21 seconds now left in regulation. Three wides for the seventh-year veteran Christensen. He's got time to the near side. It's tipped oh, and it's intercepted by Brady Clark. Everett Garrison had the coverage. Christensen was looking for his longtime friend Ken Gossett and this Houston defense. They've lived on the takeaways all season. Garrison swats it. Clark grabs it, and the hyenas stop the drive in its tracks. Big time players come up in big time situations, and Everett Garrett makes a big time play. What a turnover on this drive, keeping Houston alive. Fourth giveaway today from CC. Now does Houston have the time? They have 15 seconds and one timeout. Cappuccino does not as have as big of a leg as oh. CC. Oh, man, that was nearly a pick the other way. Probably should have been. Bernard Gooden had his hands on it. There was another defensive back. It might have been Bond that could not haul it in. Second down. Great defensive play by Gooden to tip that one up. If Bond had gotten there a little quicker and picked that off, it would have been all she wrote. Kidding. And instead, Houston lives to see another down. They will spread it out. Three wideouts to the bottom, one to the top. Remember, they've got the Hall of Famer, D.R. Sim and Leroy Brown working on a career year in their employ. Johnson, deep drop back, deep pass into triple covers, and it's picked off. Bond, Alex Bond with another takeaway. He gets up and runs. Maybe he should have gone down earlier, but either way, two seconds left on the clock. Another giveaway from Kentez Johnson, and the Kings are going to have one more chance to win it in regulation from midfield. This is absolutely unbelievable the way these teams have turned over the ball. The defense has have come up so timely, and there's two seconds left. You're right. That's enough time. They're in uh, range for uh, uh, Christensen to try the Hail Mary. 
It is well within Christensen's range. Remember, he's got Ken Gossett, one of the best wide receivers in league history. They've got a great connection. Grayson Willis is an excellent target. Jack Wall is also a good target if they decide to use him. Four wide receivers to the top. They try to Hail Mary at the end of the first half. It didn't work. They will try it here for the win. Christensen, deep pass, has two wide receivers oh. there. And the one man dives, and he cannot haul it in. Ethan Kai was on the coverage for Houston, and we are going to overtime here in the playoffs. Houston scores late. Jacksonville cannot convert a Hail Mary. We're done with four in Jacksonville. Hyenas 34. Kings chat. 34. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is the second time that these two franchises have gone to overtime. Commissioner and SFL historian and founding father Cameron Irvine is telling us another overtime game between these two. The last one came in season six. Houston won it by scoring an interception in overtime, and then DR Sim scored a touchdown pass, but they're going to need a stop here first. Old school rules in effect here in the SFL. The next points of any kind win the game. 11 more minutes on the clock. Fives up in the chat. The Kings will get the ball first. Mike St. Green on the return. Has some running room, and he's tripped up. Nice tackle made by number 59, Lee Thomas. So, Mike, you're the offensive coordinator here for Jacksonville. You can do just about anything. You've got a great kicker, as reliable as it gets in Anthony CC. How aggressive are you here? Well, we've talked about both teams all day long. We've talked about being calm, cool, and collected. CC, Christian Christensen's got to keep his composure. Let's see if they give it to their workhorse, Jared Willis, to lead the way. Under 200 passing yards today, Christian Christensen. He averages better than 250 in the regular season. They will go to Jared Willis, who is working on one of the best games of his career, and he picks up six. You see it there, 177 rushing yards for Willis. We talked about Warren Murray when he's good. Houston is good. The same is true for Jared Willis, Mike. This is now the eighth time this season that Jared Willis has gone over 100 rushing yards in the seven times in this regular season. He also had 99 in one game. But in the seven times this season where Willis cracked 100 yards rushing, Jacksonville was 6-1. and one. Can they do it again? Christensen's pass is caught by Ken Gossett. First down out towards the Jacksonville 45. Stopped by Garrison. This is where this experience combo is so lethal. Christian Christensen looks for his favorite receiver. Ken Gossett on the out route. He picks up the first down to keep this overtime drive alive. Willis also scored two touchdowns in a game five times this regular season. He had three in Jacksonville's win midseason against Chicago. And the team is 4-1 and one in those games. Both of those are true. Two touchdowns and 177 rushing yards for Willis. Jacksonville with the ball. Next score wins here in, the over, in overtime in the SFL. Christensen's pass is caught by Grayson Willis. They'll work the bottom of the screen. And Grayson picks up seven. Tackle made by Kai Cash. I like the way this ball control offense right now is clicking for Christian Christensen and the Kings. Remember, all Jacksonville needs is a field goal. It's worth belaboring the point. Next score of any kind wins. Of course, a defensive score for Houston would also win it for them. Needless to say, second and three. Minute and a half gone in overtime. The give to Jared Willis up the middle. First down for Jared Willis. The Willis brothers have come to play here in overtime. Grayson picks up seven through the air. Jared picks up seven on the ground. Jacksonville continues to cook. Third down conversions. Jacksonville hasn't lived up to their 60% billing, but that came at a big time situation. Jared Willis picks up another Jacksonville first down here in OT. Remember, Houston's defense has struggled all season. Christensen to the top of the formation. That's caught by Jack Wall. He will accelerate, and he's blown up at the end of the run by Brady Clark. But Wall picks up 14. Is that Willis? Actually, it is. 11, not 81. My apologies. Either way, big gain for Grayson Willis. Pick up 14, and they'll move the chains again. Grayson Willis, he's been targeted 11 times with only five receptions. But that one comes up in a big-time situation, giving Jacksonville another first down. And I really like what Christian Christensen has done. He hasn't taken any chances. He's found his open receivers to the outside. And one more play might seal the deal for Anthony Cece to come out and put this one away. 
Would be a 45-yard field goal from here, but Christensen is going to come out and pass. He'll sling it. Risky pass, but it's caught inside the 20-yard line goes Ken Gossett. Somehow that play was made. Alex Perez nearly had a pick. He might have been able to take it to the house if he pulled it off. Either way, it's a gain of nine for Ken Gossett. How soon do you bring on Anthony Cece? Right now, go. he's just about to say, what's Frank Gooden thinking? It's uh, They got the ball down on the 19. Anthony Cece's kicked every single field goal in his FCS foul career. Give him a shot. The time is now. Second-year kicker from Andover, New Jersey, has never missed a field goal in his SFL career. He's on to win it for Jacksonville, and Anthony Cece delivers. The Kings weather the storm. They hold on to the crown. A valiant effort from the Hyenas, but it's Jacksonville that's moving on. Anthony Cece hits his third field goal of the day, and Jacksonville wins it in overtime. What a ball game we had here in Duval County. Anthony Automatic in overtime kicks the Jacksonville Kings to the second round. A hat trick for the second year man from New Jersey. What a game. Jacksonville leads big early. Houston thought they were seeing a re replay of last week's Laffer against Vancouver, but not to be. Houston then goes on a run and takes the lead in the second half. Then Jacksonville goes on a run and takes the lead. Houston scores late. Kentez Johnson's pass to Brian Horrell to force overtime. Then in overtime, Jacksonville gets the ball, marches down the field, and you set up your playmakers to make plays, right? Ken Gossett makes this nine-yard catch to get them well within range after Grayson Willis made a couple of catches on the drive. CC knocks it through, and Jacksonville's moving on. They'll play Sioux Falls next week. The best drive of the game from Christian Christensen and the Jacksonville Kings came there on that first possession in overtime. Didn't allow Houston to get the ball back. Moved it down the field. They took their time. They stayed cool. They got it down to the Houston 18. And Anthony CC stays perfect on the season to give his team an opportunity to survive and advance. All about Jared Willis. 182 rushing yards. His first two career playoff touchdowns. Jacksonville is now 7-1 and one this season when Willis has over 100 yards rushing. Warren Murray was solid as he usually is, Mike, but he was not explosive enough and really when it all comes down to it Willis was the better of the two backs and that is a big reason why Jacksonville won well it's all about ball control and keeping the ball and possess the ball to keep the other team's defense off of the field Warren Murray I think was right around the century mark but very very close the running really went to Jared Willis 26 carries for 183 yards and two TDs on that side of the ball He's my player of the game for the Jacksonville Kings. I was going to ask you one more chance for you to continue your very high batting average. Is Jared Willis the player of the game for you? Absolutely. Christian Christensen didn't have his best game of the year, but it was the turnovers that were timely, and Jared Willis that bailed him out. Remember, Crowdplay coming up next. You can download Crowdplay on your iOS or Android device. Play for a chance to win a share of the $1,000 prize pool. The 8-9 matchup coming up next. Lone Star at Florida. Jeff Melanition and Eddie Gage are waiting on standby. That game will start as soon as we can get it to you from the eye on the other side of the state of Florida. Download the app right now. You can answer the pregame questions and enter for your chance to win a share of the $1,000 prize pool. Jared Willis. Is on a had a career game today, Mike, and he is the player of the game. Jacksonville is moving on. What a playoff game we had here in the wild card round. I can't wait for next weekend's games. And to all the fans watching from coast to coast and around the world, thank you for allowing Tim Hackett and I into your living rooms. Now allow the SFL into your dreams. My partner, Mike and Proda, our statisticians, Rochelle Coulson and Tom Rahman, and our producer, Cameron Irvine. I've been Tim Hackett. We'll see you next time. Until then, so long. Lone Star in Florida is coming up next.